Today I'm going to show you how I painted this red-eyed tree frog in watercolor, so let's get started. Most of the colors in this frog painting are secondary and neutral colors that were mixed from the primary colors included in the Daniel Smith introductory set. I'm using a Fabriano Artistico cold press paper on a block. I will have a list of all the supplies I used in the video description. I started with the background, painting wet on dry. I pre-mixed two different versions of green ahead of time and I'm adding them in large patches so they can blend and have soft edges. I'm working fairly quickly so I don't get hard edges here. I'm also using two different brushes. Both of them are black velvet. I have a larger one for the large areas and a smaller one so I can get into those little spaces around the frog. I also taped the edges with washi tape so I can have a clean white border. By the way, I sped up this footage, but you can adjust the speed in YouTube's playback settings. I'm using lots of water and even on the block, my paper is getting waves and the paint is collecting in these little valleys. So I tilt the paper down and side to side to get it to spread while the paper is still wet. Once the background was completely dry, I started painting the tip of the bird of paradise flower that he's sitting on, and this is on dry paper. I mixed some pyrrole scarlet with some new gamboge yellow for a really warm orangey red color. Once this layer has dried, I added some water again to re-wet it and add some deeper shadow areas on the flower and an even darker color around the frog's toes. I mix the shadow area by combining some of that orange color and some ultramarine blue. For the yellow underside of the flower, I used new gamboge and the darker brown was made from that same yellow with a little ultramarine and scarlet added to it. Now I'm starting the frog and I begin by painting the eyes. I first wet the entire eye, then I added the orangey red mix around the outer edges. Then towards the center, while it's still wet, I used new gamboge and made sure to leave a white area for the reflection. Then I lightly touched the yellow with a little more orange, dotting it around to encourage it to transition softly. For the darker areas, I added some brown along the edge and then ultramarine for the darkest areas. The pupil was also made from this really dark mix of scarlet and ultramarine. Starting on the toes, I'm painting on dry paper section by section. I paint around all the highlights I see on the reference photo because I want to make him look shiny, so I want to keep those areas nice and bright. I pre-mixed the orange, blue, and bright green colors that I see on his arms and legs ahead of time.
On his face, I pre-wet the area and I'm adding that green color. I'm avoiding the highlight areas and keeping them white, but this is more of a soft highlight rather than a hard edge like I see on his toes and fingers. Now I'm painting that other arm, again just following my reference photo and trying to keep the highlights where I see them. Back to that rear leg, I'm darkening that blue area below the knee and softly blending it using my clean damp brush. I painted the final hand on the right and used that same brown mix to add some shadows. To soften the edges, you can see here I use a damp brush to lightly wipe across the area that I want to blend. Then I wipe the pigment off my brush onto the towel and keep doing this until the blended area is soft. I paint his throat and chest with the same light green color and while that dries I'm adding some darker greens and blues to the arm and the leg. I add a little more dark green on the face and I dapple it a little bit to give it some texture to make it look more like bumpy skin. Now on his chin I add a darker green and I use this also around the eye sockets and nostrils as well. I went back to the chin area to make it darker because it wasn't dark enough the first time. And I start deepening the colors on his chest. I add more yellow and red hues to neutralize that green a little bit. I use that darker mix to outline his mouth. On the throat, I'm going over it again with dark colors, but making sure I keep the highlights along the folds of skin. 
I use a detail brush for some of the tighter areas. When I was done with that step, I felt that the frog needed to be a little brighter and I wanted to unify the colors, so I used bright Hansa yellow to glaze over the orange and green areas. I also felt the shadows on the flower weren't dark enough around his hands, so I made them darker along and in between the toes. After stepping away for a while and then coming back and looking with fresh eyes, I decided the background wasn't dark enough, so I wet one section at a time and added a dark blue-green glaze over it. Once it dried, I decided it was done, so I signed it and removed the washi tape. I hope you enjoyed following along with me for this frog painting. It was challenging at times to get the colors right and add convincing texture, especially with the frog being bumpy and shiny, but I am pretty happy with how it turned out. What is your biggest challenge with watercolor painting? Leave a comment and let me know your struggle and I may make it into a future video. Thank you again for joining me today. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more painting tips and tutorials. Click the notification bell as well to find out each time I add a new video. And don't forget to go to my website to get your free copy of the Mud No More Watercolor Mixing Guide. Happy painting and I'll see you next time.